I'm asking all of you because I have met some uh, women entrepreneurs here who they are very excited about their projects. What do you think about a uh, woman entrepreneur? What will be the future and how do they affect, I mean, uh, the ecosystem in Middle East? Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I, can, I can answer that very easily. Uh, I think uh, we saw all the pitches here. There was one female entrepreneur doing a pitch in, in, in Startup Turkey which was the Lady Iman, I don't know if she's here in the room, but uh, from Jordan. Uh, if you look at our accelerator, 40% uh, of our entrepreneurs are female entrepreneurs. Um, for Egypt, it's a different case. Actually, we have like 5% female founders. Like out of the 24 companies we founded, two only like managed by females or... Uh, Why, are they doing positive discrimination? Or? No, actually not. This is like just we, we, we choose according to like the quality of, of uh, applications we get, not according to gender or whatever. That's why. Yeah. I have a different experience from Ramiz. I, we run startup competitions. Uh, startup competition in 2012. Our uh, number two and number three were both women. Our competition that we ran in Egypt, number one, number two, and number three were all women. The competition that we ran in Riyadh, number three was a woman who pitched in Niqab. Uh, and she has a great business. And I think she's a great entrepreneur. So I, yeah, I see a lot of... Quality, yeah, like, yeah. Just the kids, like the... Yeah, now there's a lot more men in this business, but that also holds for Silicon Valley, right? You read articles in TechCrunch and Mash, why are there not enough women in technology? Why are there not enough women in technology? But, uh, but I think that women are definitely building great businesses in MENA. Um, Cordoba, Supermama. Uh, it was also very, very dedicated, high quality. Yeah. Any other question? I mean, in Saudi Arabia, women outnumber men in universities uh, and in performance in universities. So something to also think about. I think the same case in Egypt as well. Okay. Fortunately, they can't drive after they get their degree. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Okay. Would, would, would that change though? I mean, if, if money's coming in, if people are going to be supporting these, these entrepreneurs, and will they follow that? With the money, the, the regulations will have to change. Such a complex society. You know, we just did an event there, and I can tell you a lot more about it. But I met women who I, who I would meet with them on one on one in, in an in person meeting. Their face was uncovered, and they were very progressive. And then at the event, one of them was a speaker. I couldn't even figure out who she was because I couldn't see her, <laughs> right? Uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, going out in public, they're covered. They go to London, and all of their, their friends are there, and they're all uncovered. They get on an airplane. They, they take their niqab off. Uh, they're definitely in positions of power, but the, the culture is, it, the cult, these cultural norms run quite deep, and a lot of it is about how you are perceived by your extended family and by people who are quite conservative. We ran an event there in November. Uh, we had a mixed event, and we had a special permission to have a mixed event, and it was a complex permission to get. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, we had tweets coming from sheikhs in a different part of the country saying, prevent mixing of genders at the conference. To the point where it came, to, it went all the way to our government partners who were, who were then holding us accountable for why there was mixing, even though we actually had a permission for a mixed gender event. So there's a lot of Western educated, uh, Western educated Saudis uh, there's definitely a, um, a wave of change that is hitting the country, but, but these things are very deeply woven into the fabric of society. 